WQAD News 8, this is WQAD This Week. Good morning. It's Sunday, June 4th. Thank you for joining us for News 8 This Week. I'm John Diaz. It has been a busy and trying week for the people of Davenport and across the Quad Cities. A downtown apartment building partially collapsed last Sunday afternoon. News 8's Joe McCoy has been following the story every day since. And joining us now from downtown Davenport is News H Joe McCoy. Joe, thanks uh, for taking some time. I know you're busy down there. Um, I want to ask you uh, a little bit about your experience because you have been down there really since the first night uh, that all of this began to transpire. Um, tell us about your initial impressions that Sunday night. Yeah, John, so we have a photographer at the station, or a former photographer, I should say, Linnea Hoover, who lived in this building. And she called us as the building was collapsing. And she called one of our other reporters and told him that my building has just collapsed. I'm currently running out of it. And we honestly didn't even believe her. We thought we were hearing her wrong or something. Um, but we, of course, immediately rushed down to the scene. And when you get down here and you kind of turn that corner off of Brady and you see the back of this building, just half of it completely gone, you're just completely shocked, to be honest with you. And the raw emotion that you see from residents in those first 30 minutes to an hour is really, it's, it's, it's incredible to see and it's so saddening because uh, I, I spoke with a resident, I was trying to talk to him, and all he could say is that he had just lost everything. He had his hands in his face, he was crying. Uh, and just that emotion from these residents, they can't even believe, they can't begin to process that quickly what just happened and what their next steps are going to be to hopefully get their life back. So being here, uh, you know, residents were, are trying to call everyone. They're also concerned about loved ones or possibly pets that are still in the building at that moment. I will say that the paramedics and the police officers and fire crews, they did have the scene under control um, when we got down here about 20 minutes after. but. Just the emotion that is coming, that was coming from those residents, just was is pretty heartbreaking to watch. As you've been down there, uh, the crowd has sort of built up around, um, you know, this building. Um, it started. It sounds like protesters, but there's a lot going on outside the building right now. Can you talk about what you're seeing, what you've seen this week, how that's sort of developed over time, and the conversations you've had? Yeah, so the crowds have definitely come in ebbs and flows. There's been times where there's been a couple of hundred people here, um, and I would call them protests. They were chanting for them to continue searching the building, um, and, but everyone was very uh, in a calm, controlled manner. There never was any chaos or, or anything like that in terms of when the protests were here. Uh, but then when Lisa Brooks was found, that's when things really got taken to another level in terms of the people out here calling for the city to go back into that building and continue searching. Because after one day on Monday, the city said that they conducted an extensive search and that no one else remained in that building. Of course, when Lisa Brooks emerged from her window, we knew that not to be the case. But it's amazing how much the community has stayed together in this moment. It is hot out here. It is 93 degrees. The sun has been beaming down since Sunday when the building collapsed. But these people have not gone anywhere. There are people that are here with coolers. They have food. They are here with their families trying to stay in whatever shade uh, that is out here. But just the community coming together, and they are determined to stay here until they feel like it's OK to leave this property. And they really want to know where the other three unaccounted for people are. We kind of can presume now that they are no longer living. That's what Davenport city officials have been saying, that these people are presumed dead at this point. But they still want to have confirmation that the three people that are unaccounted for are in that rubble and that they have been located, even if they are dead. Obviously, each one of the folks who are affected by this has their own unique story. But we were introduced to uh, Victoria McLean early in the week. She was the woman who um, was frantically looking for her pets. Um, can you talk a little bit about your interactions with her? Because when we talked with her later in the week, she seemed almost hopeful and there was a positivity coming from her. Uh, tell us a little bit about her. 
Yeah, John, that was one of the tougher interviews I've, have, I've ever had to conduct. That interview was about 45 minutes to an hour after that building collapsed. Uh, Victoria could not stop shaking. She was so distraught. And as you mentioned, mostly because her pets were still in the building at that moment. She said she's someone that all she really has is her pets. Um, and her dog was still in the building along with her cats. I know she had a couple of other reptiles and stuff like that. And she just started bawling. The second I asked her the first question, she just could not hold her emotion uh, inside of her. And it was so just sad and tragic to see someone in that moment feel like they have just lost everything. As you said, John, she was able to get all of her pets back and she is a little bit more hopeful now. She's starting to get her feet back underneath her. She has a new place to stay. But in that moment, that raw emotion that was coming from her, from a woman who has just lost everything in her apartment and now she's lost the love of her pets around her and she did not believe in that moment that she was gonna be able to get all of them back. But when I interviewed her the other day and she had got her pets back uh, from the Scott County shelter, she was incredibly, incredibly relieved. And you could see the hope from her that there is gonna be a light at the end of this tunnel. It is still an incredibly tragic situation, but her life is going to continue moving forward and she will recover from this at some point. Let's talk a little bit about the questions that are still on the table. Obviously, you've asked some pointed questions of city officials, uh, but a lot of our viewers are asking us questions uh, and wondering if we are asking those questions. I know uh, that you are, but can you talk about some of the things that maybe so far are still unanswered that you're trying to get to the bottom of? Yeah, of course, the biggest question is, how did this building collapse? Why was this building not deemed unlivable before it collapsed? That's the main one there, and the city says that they're going to be doing a, a, an extensive investigation to get to the bottom of that, of how was this building deemed safe to live in until it literally came crashing down. Of course, the city also is wondering how Lisa Brooks was not found during that initial investigation. The city, a lot of people feel the city was quick to rush to say that no one else was in the building. Of course, a day later, Lisa Brooks emerged. So that's another pressing question. And the city today at the press conference saying that they cannot disclose whether the three men that are unaccounted for have been found. So that's another question. If, if those three men are in that rubble, again, presumably dead, another pressing question. But people want to know how the city could have a building in the middle of downtown Davenport in such poor condition and deem it livable for the community members, especially a building that is across the street from City Hall and its kitty corner to the police department. This is a building that city officials look at every single day. And we saw from those documents that were released the other night just how poor of a condition this building was in. There was exterior brick walls, Boeing just screaming out for help. There was massive cracks within walls inside of the building. And I'm not talking about hairline cracks. I'm talking about cracks that are almost from the floor floor to the ceiling and how the city saw that and then they called the engineers out from Select Structural. Select Structural decided that the building was not in imminent danger, that the building could still be lived in and four days later the building collapsed. Joe, we know you'll stay on top of this story. News H Joe McCoy uh, joining us from Davenport. Joe, thank you so much. Thank you, John.